Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, before we start, Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar is getting out to people still in America, <laughs> um, no one uh, overseas yet, but uh, thanks for sending these in. I'm getting some really good reviews, which really makes me think that I made the right decisions about going back and reworking some stuff and just polishing it until it was really ready to be released. I love seeing that. This is some nice weapons right here. Some of these are real and some of these are airsoft, but we are still in America, so most of them are real. <laughs> nice dog. I'm not sure what this ring is for right here. So thanks for sending those in. Jawbreakers Forever, in demand. Iron Sights 3, Impossible Stars 2, combo campaign. You don't have to order both, but you save 10% if you do. Ibai has finished the story. He's now working on the uh, illustration for the back cover. So uh, Oni Press released this statement a couple days ago, and uh, I don't know, just SJWs just pulled out the long knives. I thought it was kind of like a one-day thing, but apparently Rich Johnston needed to do a second article about it. And it's, although, you know, there are different takes on it, most is just people just talking shit and trying to cause problems. And it just goes on and on and on and on and on. And um, it's a funny thing. <laughs> because um, I don't like being told what to do. And I tend to do the opposite. Uh, but what I watched is a company do all the things that it was supposed to do. Destroy itself and then be trampled upon by the people who said, oh no, it's billions of dollars and everything's great, it's doing better than ever. So um, one of the strangest things about the comic book industry is how poorly documented it is. So this is the Oni Press Wikipedia. It's been around for you know 25 years. There's barely anything in it. This history, most of it is the merger from three years ago and recent controversies. Like, for the first 20 years of publishing, there's almost no information. So much so that I started to doubt myself. I was like, I first remember Oni as doing the Kevin Smith comics. He's not mentioned on here. So Oni has been an indie, uh, you know, it's been around for 25 years. Uh, it was bought by Lion Forge, which is a multimedia um, conglomerate. Basically, they're trying to buy their way into uh, Hollywood, owned by a rich guy. Oni was having problems. Uh, Lion Forge was having some problems. They merged together like Voltron. They started laying off people because that always happens. Then the people who got laid off said, these people are a bunch of racists. It's a bunch of black guys from St. Louis. Anyway, <laughs> nothing really happened. They hired Gail Simone to save their... The, the, she barely... She, she showed as much interest. Do you remember when she had a YouTube channel and she was reviewing tabletop games and she was literally just like tapping the box and saying oh nice colors and some of them were still in the cellophane and that was her review um yeah so they paid whatever they paid it was too much and nothing really happened from it nobody really cared about owning nobody checked in on them and then when they had to do layoffs they attacked them so uh for those who don't know oni started with um they had uh, uh kevin smith Jim Mahfoud, this is back in the 90s. And then you also had stuff uh, like uh, Greg Ruckus' Queen and Country, which I loved. I read everything from it. But their bread and butter was Scott Pilgrim. But if you go to their site, it's terrible. <laughs> now the site, they're insisting they're still open. And when I look at what they sell, I wonder how they were ever open. Because this is just awful. But again, it's following all the rules of this peop these people. All these vicious SJWs. They're like, well, you know, 40% of humanity is gay. But like 80% of comics. So just make everything gay. Oh, yeah, and it's Gay Pride Month. But <laughs> just keep it like that the whole time. So we got the uh, Pride Month is upon us. Gender, queer, flourish, and grow. Limited edition charity gickly art print. What does it say? Some people are born in the mountains, while others are born by the sea. Some people are happy to be... Who, who wants shit like this? Nobody, nobody wants shit like this. Chef's Kiss, Wish You Were Queer, limited edition, geekly art print. And then when, 
Then they have merch and games, which is just like a really long <laughs> print. Um, some Scott Pilgrim stuff. Okay, so you got to squeeze a few more drops out of that. And then you get down to their selections, and it's early readers, middle grade, young adult. Wait, is is this is this like for Scholastic only? Do you have like general audiences? It's 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 either wish you were queer on the beach or early readers, do gooders, robots, and it it sucks. It's a lame as fuck company that used to be pretty darn okay. Um, it's kind of hard to explain that Kevin Smith used to be kind of cool. <laughs> Everyone below the age of 30 is like, what the fuck is this old man talking about? Um, yeah, he was a thing in the 1990s and not like sarcastically him crying, but people liked his movies. Sometimes people liked his comics. They did quite well. They did a lot of them. They had very good artists on them. And then Scott Pilgrim was, of course, huge. Queen and Country kind of fell down the memory hole. I like that so much. I literally read the novel. There wasn't a graphic novel. It was a regular novel. And I read that. And now we got uh, Rick and Morty IP uh, written by Mags. What is this? Like, who, who wants this? Then, I look at this. I've been going through an ultimate phase uh, reading this stuff. I got so excited by this team on Ultimate X-Men. I was like, ooh, I'm going to go reread uh, uh, New Avengers. And it's like, oh, shit. Like, all the trash humor from the MCU, it was all, it all comes from Bendis' New Avengers line, like the cutesy pie and, you know, talking like Chandler and Ross from Friends. It's all there. Um, but so this is the last issue of their run. And when I look at this, all I see is money. I see money well spent. Bendis was only a few years into his career, but he had enough success on Ultimate Spider-Man that I'm sure by... What is this, like 2004? I'm sure he was getting a pretty hefty page rate. And he was getting royalties. And Dave Finch had built himself up. And he was, I'm, I bet even the inker. It was R.T. Bear for most of this run. But I think it was Danny Meeky for the last one or two issues. Coloring looks great. The only thing I don't like is the... Uh, I have not seen this before or since. But it, it drives me insane. Having the, the balloon going... You know, the connector be really fat on one end. I know it's supposed to, like, draw your eye. They're like, oh, I'm going in this direction. Don't do this ever again. <laughs> don't, don't do it ever again. But you look at this, and this was meant to be, I mean, you got Sentinels. You got all these, you know, effects of some pretty good digital coloring. Look at this. This was meant to sell. This was made to make everyone money. Not keep the lights on. Not... The industry has done better than ever, but I can't afford any employees. And <laughs> No, this was made to make Marvel a ton of money, to make Bendis, Dave Finch, the anchor probably as well, the stores, the distributor. It was made, and it's good. It's actually a good story. They decided like, hey, what if we took really popular characters and we just tried to sell as many issues as possible while having fun and enjoying it. It sounds crazy. Now look at this shit. Would, would, you, would, would anyone have started this company? So I'm going to start a comic company. Oh, what do you want to do? Uh, like a lot of pastels and maybe like some patches. It's gay pride month, so we're going to do a lot for that. I heard people like prints, so... Maybe like a Wish You Were Queer limited edition geekly art print. You know, that's... and Like, what if we just had like a really long print? That it was, it was really long. It was like wider than a couch. That would be... That, that's, that's lifestyle brand. That's lifestyle brand. That is, that is SJW 101 is turn things into female-centric lifestyle brand. And you saw what it is. Back in the day, you knew what Oni was. You know, they were the indie company. They did kind of like cool stuff. Now, what is this? This is, this is, this is an indie company. This is, quote, indie company. This is every independent company. All of them are going for the gay market, you know, single digit percentage of the population. 
All of them are going for the YA market, which is completely flooded. All of them are going for Scholastic, which has a very limited amount of books that can get into it. Marvel gets like what? Like four to five books in the Scholastic? How many do you think... Do you think they, them pronouns or a quick and easy guide to asexualities? No. You did everything right. And it turned out horribly wrong. You now have your allies mocking, degrading... They're telling everyone that's still with them. They're like, hey, if you got a contract, see if you can get out of it. Uh, just just attacking them, degrading them. You did everything right, Oni. You went from action and like bro humor to pastels and everyone's gay and lifestyle and flowers and home decorating and just, what is this, a board game? Bird Watcher the Board Game. What the fuck? Seriously, Queen and Country was awesome. I think they they didn't do the first. Uh, I think it was, who was it? Bravura, Bravura, Bravura did the first, but they did the Nocturnals when they brought them back. Y'all had some good comics. You did, and then you turned into this, this shit. Nobody likes it. Five years of you know propaganda from Heidi McDonald told you this is the way. Things are better than ever. Now you're laying off everyone. And instead of your peers going like, hey man, you good? Hey, if you, got, if you just got laid off by Oni, I run IDW and things are better than ever. We're hiring. Nope. Nope. Just make everything worse. <laughs> this is awful. The idea that to evolve a company, you need to abruptly fire staff is baffling to me. This stinks of a parent company not understanding the industry and knee-jerking their way through it. I hope everyone involved finds a new home. Hashtag Oni Press. D do you want to hire these people? What do you make? Generic, unsaleable, YA, SJW content? I also... I know the setting on Photoshop where you can make the canvas like really wide. Like, wider than a couch. <laughs> oh my god, is this SJW here? Oh, it's a funny piggy. He hangs out with the gays on the beach. <laughs> the fuck? Who is this for? What? No, it wasn't. For, obviously, it wasn't for anyone. That's why you're laying everyone off. But at least you have the compassion. Oh, no, you don't have that shit either. You got nothing. You got. You, you, you took a solid, you know, you took a solid freaking company that lasts for decades lasted through a recession almost a great recession but you couldn't survive sgw propaganda comics have never been better according to a bunch of fucking liars <laughs> jawbreakers forever iron sights 3 impossible stars 2 combo campaign thanks for watching bye